to some 40 miles from the Met Center. Setting the record on Ledoux, he has 125, 17 by knockout. He has lost seven. He has fought three draws. He fought one disputed draw against Leon Spinks back in October of 1977. A hand for Sugar Ray Leonard, who is here to watch the fight and warmly greeted by the crowd. Many boxing people felt Ledoux won that fight against Leon Spinks. In fact, Ledoux has been involved in three highly controversial decisions as you watch Ken Norton approach the ring area. The other two disputed fights, his last one, a 10-round split decision won by Run Lyle in Las Vegas this past May 12th and a loss to Johnny Boudreaux back in February of 77, leading to Ledoux trying to get at Boudreaux following that decision. Here is Kenny Norton. And as we mentioned earlier, Norton looks at today as step one in a comeback bid. Ferdy Pacheco, he wants one last shot at a heavyweight title. And he deserves it. He's been a great fighter for many years, but he's got to prove it tonight. If he doesn't prove it tonight, it's all over for Ken Norton. As we mentioned earlier, needs an impressive victory here over Ledoux to convince people a loss today and the boxing career of Ken Norton could be all over. Norton has a five-inch advantage in reach and an inch and a half in height. Ledoux, 30 years old. Norton says he's 34. This is an age that has been contested from time to time. Yes, as fighters get older, their ages get a little obscure. Remember Jersey Joe Walcott? Remember Archie Moore? At ringside, timekeeper at the bell is Mike Thomas. Jimmy Lennon. With the Keeping count of the knockdowns, of the fighters. Bob Andrich. Ladies and gentlemen, this event, 10 rounds, and introducing to you, on my right, should say on my left now, needing no introduction to the local fans, as you know, he hails from Crosby, Ironton, Minnesota, fighting out of the Twin Cities. Blue velvet trunks, they're red, white, and blue. San Diego fighting out of L.A. Weighing 223 and three quarters, blue velvet and the white stripe. The former boxing champion in the heavyweight division, the popular Kenny North. Wally Holmes. All right, the introduction of Ken Norton, preceded by the intro of Scott Ledoux. Now let's go inside the ring for the pre-fight instruction. <coughs> okay, Norton and Scott, you, you guys got uh, uh, briefed by the boxing commission when you weighed in, so you know what all the rules are. Now, all I want you to do is I don't want nobody, and I want you to watch your low blow. And when you clinch, and I say break, I want you to break, and I want a clean break. I don't want to put my hands, I don't want to part you. Now, in case of a knockdown, you must go to the furthest neutral corner and stay there till I'm watching the fight, and the other fighter will have to take the count of eight. All right, let's have a good fight. Good luck to both of you. The referee is Wally Holm out of Minneapolis, longtime official in this area. The judges also out of Minneapolis, Denny Nelson and Leroy Benson, scoring of the fight, 10-point must. The standing eight count on the fact that the state of Minnesota has been waived. The count does not continue after the bell. Fighter can be saved by the bell. Three knockdowns in any one round ends the fight. Today's matchup originally scheduled for July 22nd in San Diego. Norton suffered a rib injury. Match was postponed. Ledoux felt it was an alibi for Norton to buy more time. He felt Norton wasn't really ready for that fight. It may well have been, but uh, Norton is ready today. He's down to slim trim self. He's got a 31-inch waist, and he looks like Norton of old. There's no fat or no flabber on him and no, no fat on his face. And he's come out with a stinging jab. 
Gary Norton's major problem has been, is he still interested in boxing? Can he get himself psyched up? I think he is today. If you're talking to him, he seems to be very clear as to where he's going. He's dedicated this fight to Bob Byron, his manager, and then he rippers in the famous singer. He's serious. He's determined. Byron is back in San Diego fighting for his life after brain surgery. And Cinder Betty Ripperton died of cancer last month at the age of 31. And Ken was close to many and her family. And Frank Ken brought some of the family here to Bloomington for today's fight. We're in round one. Scheduled 10 round. Ken Norton on the right. Scott Ledoux on the left. Minute and a half remaining in round one. And so far, Kenny is fighting the fight that he wanted to fight. Coming ahead with a stinging jab and chasing Ledoux to the ropes. Ledoux is not fighting the fight he wanted to fight in middle distance, trying to tie up Kenny. Ledoux's best chance against Norton, he admits, would be to connect on the chin early to take advantage of potential early nerves that Norton might be... Uh, suffering from, but Ledoux may lack the coordination which would allow Norton to get himself together later on. Yes, and in order to connect, you have to throw, and that's what Scott has not been doing. He's been catching, but he hasn't been throwing. Norton setting up Ledoux on the ropes and lands the ball. Kenny's fighting exactly the way he wants to fight. He's coming forward in that crab-like style, dragging his foot behind him, but with a stinging jab. As long as that jab goes in, Scott's not going to get anything off. 30 seconds left round one, and the crowd was responding to Ledoux. Ledoux missing with the left. Landing with the left. Scott must try to trade jabs as he did just then. His face is already getting red. Final seconds of round one from the Met Center in Bloomington, Minnesota. This is round two. Marv Albert with Dr. Ferdy Pacheco from Bloomington, Minnesota. Ken Norton on the left. Scott Ledoux on the right. The feeling around here has been that Ledoux would need almost a perfect fight to beat Norton. The key for both to get the other guy to back up. Norton does not fight well going back, and he says Cadley, uh, his reverse gear, doesn't work that well. That's right. I've never seen him go back too much. I've seen him in three fights with Muhammad Ali. He came forward for three fights. When you do that against the great Muhammad Ali, you know you're a forward fighter. Kenny was off balance. He threw a punch and went back. The fans thought it meant something. Crowd overreacting on that last punch landed by Ledoux. Right hand by Norton, and Ledoux shakes his head as if to say, didn't hurt. That little bravado cost you nothing. He came back to the corner bleeding from the nose. He stood between rounds, which is not good for Scott. But Norton, like the complete throw he is, sat down, and he's calmly taking him apart. Combination by Ledoux, but did not affect Norton. Ledoux, 30 years old, six foot one and a half, 218 pounds, out of Crosby, Minnesota. He's 125, 17 by knockout. He's lost seven, and he's fought three draws. That particularly disputed draw against Leon Spinks. Right now, he's letting Kenny dictate the tempo of the fight. That's not to his advantage. That's what he must do. Didn't hurt Norton. Oh, but he must get close, punch in the floor and grab Norton before he can punch again. Norton has to keep that jab going, and he's doing it. Referee Wally home break. One minute left, round two. And Marv, you can certainly see what the fans create a great advantage for a fighter. Any little thing that Scott does brings a great roar, whereas Kenny is going to work systematically, not drawing any kind of a reaction. Oh, missing as he had Ledoux up against the ropes. A lunging left hand attempted by Ken Norton. 30 seconds remaining. Round two. 
reaction by LeDoux, and as you can hear, the crowd loves it. That's what Scott's got to do. Scott just showed you how to win the fight. Those punches and move away or grab them. Oh, Martin landed with the left. Time running down here, round number two. Round three, schedule ten. From the Met Center, Bloomington, Minnesota. Ken Norton in the final seconds of round two. Landed hard with a left to the head on Scott Ledoux. He didn't get Scott in trouble, but he's beginning to land very hard punches. Scott still stood between. Ledoux going right back at Norton against the ropes. And again, the crowd overreacting. That time, a good shot to Norton. this kind of energy and this kind of excitement. That was a low blow, low blow. Low blow by Kenny. Unintentional. Kenny apologized, but LeDoux did not exactly accept the apology. No, it's hard to when you're hurting. Uppercut by North with no effect. Left hand by North. Good left hook by North. Good rally by Norton. Norton is fighting just the kind of fight he wants. Calm, planned, methodical. He's systematically taking him apart. Shot by Scott. Good thumping body shot. He must do more of that if he's going to slow down Norton and keep him off of him. A minute left. Round three. Scott is being hit, hit by these hooks and by these jabs. He doesn't seem to be able to put up his right hand. And Norton with the edge over these first three. Ledoux landing to Norton to back, but strong in. Combination by Norton. 30 seconds left, round three. You may catch blinking lights in just a couple of seconds. Those are reminders to the fighter that the round is in the process of concluding. Morton with a good shot to the head of Ledoux. Final seconds, round three. <laughs> round four underway, no knockdowns thus far. Scott Ledoux and Ken Norton, both outstanding all-around athletes. Ledoux played both offensive and defensive tackle at the University of Minnesota in Duluth. Played amateur hockey the past couple of years. Ken Norton. Play football, basketball, and that combination by Ledoux, but not able to shed it all. And that's been the tempo of the fight that you just saw. Scott came in with a good combination, but got nailed on the way in. In all fairness, Norton has not been as effective with his legs. His legs do not appear to have that spring and pop that they had five or six years ago. He stumbled all over himself. He's been out of uh, balance several times. Herder, does Norton actually overthink or outthink himself? I believe he outthinks himself. I think I think Norton's one of the smartest fighters around, and by that I mean in intelligence, not in ring intelligence. Good luck by Norton. As long as Norton is fighting on instinct and coming forward, he's a fearsome fighter. He's a devastating puncher, and he's very hard to hit. But the dude's giving him all he wants. Halfway through round four from the Met Center, Bloomington, Minnesota, Bart Albert with the fight doctor, Ferdy Pacheco. A record gate in 
the state of Minnesota for boxing. Again, the typical one-two to the body by Scott and a beautiful hook to the head by Norton to stop him. Oh. Norton scoring on the body of Ledoux, who says, come on, keep coming. Scott Ledoux just said, come on, and Norton just said, I'm coming. Great leverage by Norton in his punches. Uppercut landed by Norton. Inside uppercuts, right hands, hooks, hooks to the body. Ledoux accepting a lot of leather here in round four. Well, we've always known Scott Ledoux has no shortage of heart. He's certainly showing it today. 30 seconds left, round four. Norton is dominating the fight. That right hand landed by Ledoux. Counter by Norton. Seconds, round four. There is Scott Ledoux's wife, Sandy, still situated in the penalty box over at the far side, but not looking very happy. I wonder if she will remain there throughout the fight. She has been known to uh, depart from the arena. She has, has, to to has, has the history of taking a walk. Uh, very difficult. This is round five. It has been all going who is pressing and pressing, always moving forward. Kenny Nart, step one in a comeback bid, and he needs an impressive victory over Scott Ledoux to convince people lost today. And the boxing career of North could be all over. He has lost his last two fights, first round KO by Ernie Shavers, and a great fight, but he lost the 15-round decision to the WBC heavyweight champ, Larry Holmes. Which, by the way, turned out to be one of the better heavyweight championship fights in the last 10 years. I'd like to see a rematch. Beautiful inside uppercut by Norton. Made with two bounce on his feet. Lance to the side of the head of Norton. And Norton has a history of starting out big and then slowing down in the middle round. Right, right now he's way ahead, but if he slows down and lets Scott get brave and get started, then he's got trouble because who knows how old he is and who knows what, what that toll took. Kenny Norton is listed at 34. Local writers wrote that he is 37, maybe 38, which did not particularly uh, delight Norton when he read the paper this morning. Whatever he's got, he's got one of the most fantastic fighters ever seen inside of a boxing room, whatever age he is. Oh, that left hand landed by Norton. A minute left in the fifth round. We're at the Met Center, Bloomington, Minnesota. Ledoux is shaken now. Ledoux, I think, has hurt his nose again. He's grabbed his nose. It's been broken several times. He looks like he's having trouble breathing out of his nose. Beautiful combination. Over, under, over. 30, 30 seconds left. Round five. And Norton has Ledoux in trouble here. But Ledoux's fighting back. What a heart he's got. What a heart Scott Ledoux's got. He just won't quit. Final seconds. Round five. You feign him off and everything. You know, All right, we're in the corner know, of keep Scott that fight Ledoux. Ledoux. I know, I know. His manager, advisor, Popper Joe. Keep that fight out the middle. You keep no, boxing, and there's no problem. And then you can As we watch some of the action inside, from you know, round five. And here's where he hurt his nose. He got a good left hand. Followed another one. L look at his face as he absorbs that. Followed another one. See, he's holding his nose right there. Ken Norton appears to be unmarked while Ledoux in a struggle in round five. This is round six. Yes. Scott's coming out 
trying anything to keep him off. He's got to do some fighting. He hasn't won around. Now Norton is talking to the door. Yeah, Norton's playing and he shouldn't be playing. That's what's happened to him in various fights. He can't keep his mind on business. He should get right down to it. That cost him in round 14 of the Yankee Stadium fight against Muhammad Ali. It cost him against home. But he's back. Hard. Muhammad Ali told me he's one of the hardest body shots he ever took from Norton. He also told me he's one of the hardest men to hit he's ever fought. And when you know how good a puncher Muhammad Ali was, you understand how hard Kenny Norton is to hit. Jab of Norton, flicking it and landing the right to the bottom. And Lazio is taking a lot of punishment. Beautiful combination by Norton. Following him to the corner. He's all business now. And it's all Norton. It's all business and he, he had to look good and he's certainly looking good. This is championship caliber boxing. There's no reason that Norton could be kept out of title contention off, off a battle like this if he keeps it up for the rest of the fight. We are in round six. Marv Albert and Bertie Pacheco from the Met Center of Bloomington, Minnesota. We have a minute left in the round. All of a sudden, Norton's gone into slow motion. Is he resting? Is he getting tired? Very flat footed. He tried the uppercut off the peak of her and takes a right hand from Ledoux. Ledoux's not all taking. He's also punch punishing when he's coming off on the ropes. But the ratio is 25 to 1 just about. Norton's on the ropes and he's giving punishment. Second mark for round six. And the North assault on Scott Ledoux continues. We're back with round seven. And North on the right, Scott Ledoux on the left. Ledoux described as an aggressive falling fighter who can take a punch and usually takes many. That is all he has been doing here today. Many, many in this city, the, the opinion in this city was this round, this fight would not go four or five rounds either way. And here we are. Scott still taking fearsome punishment. North's corner sending him out to finish it up. like fashion behind him as he's done all his career keeping his gloves up high keeping his right hand crossed over his chest hard to hit and, and that awkward dragging of the foot by Norton was severely criticized in a three fight press conference by Scott Ledoux who was rather vocal about the style of Norton Norton did not retort, just let it go. No, because everybody is, is criticized the style, but if they say in boxing, it works for you to do it. After all, they criticized Muhammad Ali for carrying his left hand too low, and look where it got him. Now he's really good. Norton continues to score on the do. The left hand is stiff and punishing. Eight, nine, ten times he throws it. And Scott seems incapable of answering. That was a rare combination thrown by Ledoux. And good right hand. Less than a minute remaining in round seven. Oh, Whoa, boy. Norton 
just said to Scott, whoa, stand still. Technician of the ring. Style is both graceful and, as Ledoux has pointed out, awkward. Well, it's very effective. Ledoux just can't get off that right hand as long as that left is in its face. Continues to prove the value of the jabs. Final seconds, round seven. Hi. This is round eight. Reminder, the scoring of the fight on a 10-point must system. The standing eight count in effect here in the state of Minnesota has been waived. The count does not continue after the bell. The fighter can be saved by the bell. We have not yet had a knockdown. It has been all Ken Norton. Don't you tell you what optimist cornerman can be. Scott Ledoux's corner just said he's now tired. He's dragging his feet. It's now time to go after him and finish it off. Yep. Look what he's done. He's come out in the whole beginning of this round. The rap on Norton was as long as he's going forward and fighting, he is devastated. But when he stops fighting and lets the other guys start, he just quits all together. It's happened to him with Scott with Young. It happened to him with Old. If you could get a little Joe Frazier's blood into, into Kenny Norton, Kenny Norton will be the champion for a long time to come. Oh, solid left thrown by Norton. Norton is the first to admit that he also lacks what can be termed a killer. Oh, oh, he's, he's, he's had an eye. Norton's, Norton's got a thumb in the eye and he can't see. Now this is Scott Clark. Looks to be the left eye. For the yes, he's blinking in the left eye. Halfway through round eight, but suddenly a turn. Scott doesn't know how to take advantage of it. He's too tired, too weary, or just doesn't know how. Ledoux continues to maul and brawl and has not been able to land an effective blow. <laughs> Something's still bugging him. He cannot see it. It looks like a little cut on the inside, but it's certainly bothering him. Crowd responding to Ledoux. It looks like Norton has settled down, although he's still having difficulty with the eye. And oh, Norton he's settled down, back. all right. Norton is all right, apparently. He has settled down. He's past the trouble. He can't see out of that left eye good. with a combination. 30 seconds left. Round eight. Scott's chance is flying by. If he doesn't do anything now, he is crazy. Good. All right. Final second in round eight. And we're going to stay right here and check out the corner of Ken Norton. The hand for Scott Ledoux. appear to be a big cut. He's, he's giving him the eye test to see if he can see whether there's two fingers held in front of him. Apparently he's letting him go. He singles it's okay. They're putting an ice bag, which is exactly what they should do. Reduce the swelling. Nine, baby. Kick his ass. He did that deliberately. I'd stick a fucking thumb in his eye, too. Referee, watch the front. He got his wife. with Bill Slate, Eddie Bossman Jones, and Earl McClure. And now let's see if we can measure the effect of that eye injury. 
I think the check is going to be a kid. He's going to get madder, and he's going to do some devastating punishment. Scott had a magnificent opportunity. For a minute and a half, he had him blind. This is round nine from the Met Center, Bloomington, Minnesota. And for the first time, he's giving as good as he takes. Good, fast fight action. Last round in this round. Scott fighting back. He throws a jab with a thumb open, and that's what hit him. The crowd attempting to urge the hometown favorite, Scott LeDoux, on, but again, Norton never to land. But Norton does not pardon him. Norton's on him. Norton's on him like glue right now. Devastating punishment being inflicted on Scott, but Scott is still coming back. Good combination by LeDoux to get the crowd going. We are in round nine. Fight has turned. What was Norton taking the thumb of the eye in the eighth round, halfway through round nine? And Norton is showing signs of weariness as well. He should. He's on most of the fighting for nine rounds. Now, this is the kind of fight that Scott is used to. Mauling, pushing up against the ropes, laces, gloves, thumb, thumbing the eye. He's got everything going for him right now, and this is not... Norton's fight. Less than a minute. Terrific fighting off the ropes by Norton. And LeDoux got in with a blow to Norton's head. Norton having difficulty getting off the ropes, and LeDoux gets it again. There. They're pitching and catching, and they're taking turns. Norton is sitting on the middle rope. He's using anything he can to rest right now. He is one weary fighter. All right, let's get out of there. Let's get out of there. Come on. And the referee, Wally Holm, finally gets to the park as we approach the final seconds of round number nine. Will do hurt Norton. Lou hurt Martin here in the final second. <laughs> Delivering and hurting Ken Norton back in round nine. No question that he was hurt. No question at the end of the round he went back extremely weary. This is certainly not an easy fight. This is certainly not a pushover fight for Johnny Ken Norton. Keep going. Come on, Keep your hell out of it. This is the final round, round number 10 from the Met Center in Bloomington. LeDoux on the left, Norton on the right, LeDoux with the rally in the late round, and being urged on by the crowd. A standing ovation for the 10th round, and these fighters deserve it. Pretty in all fairness to Ken Norton, as we mentioned at the start, this was the briefing clear from the road. This fight is certainly, no matter what happens from here on in the final round, is not a convincer for Norton. It has not been, no. Norton expected to be much more impressive than he was. He was very impressive at the beginning. There is Sandy Ledoux. But he's, he's getting hit. We might add, although Ledoux continues to come up. His legs are going away from him. That's on top of him on the rope. And Ken Norton is down.
at this moment. At this moment, he is completely in another planet. A good shove would put him down. And remember, there's a three knockdown rule in effect. Three times, and it's over. This is the final round of a scheduled ten rounder. Scott got him and doesn't know it. The duel has him, and he doesn't know it. He has no legs. He has no legs. A good shot will put Norton on his backside. Ledoux has not been able to connect. We are not sure how much time remains here in round 10. And this crowd is on its feet. It is going berserk. 30 seconds to go. A ring announcer just announced. Penny's trying to make a comeback here. Scott's let him off the hook. What a finish to a fight. There he is. There he is. Going for trouble again. We're approaching the final seconds. Here is Norton. Here is Norton going over the ropes. He's being That's given it. an eight. He's being let go. Oh, he's going to let him go. It appears that he called it. Wait a moment. No. They are no, all that stopping is not. the fight. At first, the referee... No, the referee says no. The fight is not stopped. The referee says no. The Scott Ledoux corner is assuming that they have won, but there is chaos in the ring. The referee has made a very, very bad error of looking like he called the fight off, but he did not. Now he can't take it back. There's too many people. Now we're having a big problem. At first, it appeared the referee who was out of the... Well, it makes no difference now. He's taking his gloves off, he's taking his wrappings off, and it's academic now. Well, if it was the end of the fight, then they did not flash the 15-second lights, which it would be another failing. Well, in any a... case, it is a brouhaha of major proportions. They have had a problem here in the final round, as we mentioned, with the timing. The 15-second indicator was not working. The, the difficulty came with the stopping of the clock to get the ice out of the corner. Apparently, they did not keep the time correctly. No one knows if the fight was over if he won it. Right now, no one's made any occasion. Apparently, the fight is over, and they are now going to judge it by the scorecards, which will be extremely difficult because it is possible Ken Norton won on the scorecards which would be a cause for a great deal of unhappiness in the Twin City tonight. So here is a situation where both Ken Norton and Scott Ledoux, who have been a part of more than their share of controversial conclusions, are both involved right now. The referee apparently was stopping or was indicating to both corners that the fight was over that the 10th round had concluded the Ledoux corner took it for granted that the fight was stopped that was not the case and we'll, we'll have a decision in any case it was less than a clear-cut case of correct officiating one must say that in control of a major fight you should know at all times and your indications should be such that leave no doubt in either corner as to whether the fight was on or off and certainly that's not the case here we have a genuine controversy and a genuine objection can be lodged by Scott should he lose this fight well the judges Denny Nelson and Leroy Benson both of whom are licensed referees are from the Minneapolis area the same for the referee Wally Holmes so we shall see 
Well, that really doesn't make any difference in that. As the fights are over, as the rounds are over, you turn in your scorecard. So you cannot do one of those last-minute revamping of thoughts. He might have won the last few rounds and lost the first eight. Here's a look at the knockdown of Kenny Norton. Terrific right hand was blocked. He was going down front. Now that was a good right uppercut, a left hand, and let's cut to the decision. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we have a split decision. Wally Holm, referee, sees at 95-94, favor of Scott Ledoux. Teddy Nelson, judging 96-94, Ken Norton. The deciding ballot cast by Leroy Benson, judging 95, Ledoux, 95, Norton. It's a draw. A draw is given. A draw is given, which is as good as a defeat for Ken Norton and his opportunity. It is regrettable that it ended on such an anticlimactic note following such a dramatic and spectacular fight. So another disputed draw for Scott Ledoux, another disputed decision for both Ken Norton and Scott Ledoux. We'll be back in a moment. All right, back at ringside, and this is not a happy crowd here at Bloomington, Minnesota. What with the draw between Scott Ledoux and Ken Norton, we have with us the referee, Wally Holm. Would you explain what happened in those final seconds? Well, in the final seconds, the, the bell rang, and the other guy didn't think the bell rang. See, they, they didn't know if the bell rang or not, but it did ring. That's why the fight was, it was over. They thought it was a technical knockout, but it wasn't a technical knockout. He was still on his feet. Did you hear the bell? Yeah, I heard the bell faintly, and I went and asked the timekeeper, and he said it's a bell. That's why. You appeared to make motions to Scott. Don't take off your gloves. It's not over. Did well, you really feel that you had doubts? No, I didn't have any doubt after I had the timekeeper. No doubt at all. Was there any point where you considered stopping the fight? The indication at first appeared to be that the no. fight was about to be stopped. No, I wasn't going to have no indication of stopping it because it's a heavyweight fight and and uh, he's in too good a shape. He was too good a shape to go down yet. He was fine. Okay, thank you. The referee, Wally Holm, it has been a controversial close here at Bloomington, Minnesota. Marv Albert with Dr. Ferdy 